So over the last few months, all production came to a complete standstill, but today's kind of our first day back. You excited, Sam? Hell yeah! Now that the studio's finally starting to come together, we're gonna take it all, pack it all up, and throw it right in the truck again. <laughs> Although lately, YouTube has taken up a majority of my time, but I still do like doing these shoots, and I think it also helps me be a better YouTuber because if I'm reviewing gear, when I'm reviewing it, I'm more looking at the specs and what it's capable of doing and all that but when I go out to a shoot I go okay scratch all of that what am I actually going to take out and shoot with now there's probably not any electricity out there so we're gonna have to power everything off a of battery so all our lights are gonna be LED we're gonna be super efficient so that we can power these lights for a long time now one thing that is kind of tricky about doing production shoots is that I can't really show it I mean I guess I can show us prepping and going out to there but once we get there all our footage that we shoot there is kind of their intellectual property so I can't just take the stuff we shoot and throw it on this YouTube channel all right this battery pack is gonna be useful when we're out there this should be able to power a couple of our lights for a while this shoots what like an hour and a half or two hours away so we can't forget anything general checklist we have our three cameras we have batteries for everything we have memories for everything we also have support so we have tripods gimbals everything we need and then we got power supply so we have our big old battery and a bunch of email batteries we have our lighting we have sound we have our microphones xlr cables all that good stuff plenty of c stands light stands feeling pretty good that we have everything which is good it's always a little bit stressful going like we have everything right because if you forget that one little thing it can completely throw you off so i think we're good and this is time to start heading over wow it's definitely been a while since i've sat in traffic i did not miss this part at all desert shoots can be really cool because you can get some really cool shots but the location we were shooting at there was so much dust everywhere do you have an affiliate link for that dust cover mm -hmm. i manufacture <laughs> them myself all day tomorrow i'm probably gonna just have to go through all the gear and just clean it all out before i wrap up for the night i'm just gonna start dumping this footage and actually with our super fast internet i've been starting to back up a lot of the files on Dropbox, which was never an option before because to back up this much footage that we got today, it would take forever. But I think this might be a process that we can actually get done overnight. I love having that peace of mind that everything's gonna be backed up to the cloud by the morning. I'm gonna take a shower, which I really desperately need. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh man, it's been like two weeks since I posted a video on my main channel, Potato Jet. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish editing this Mavic Air video and let's cut to tomorrow. We're gonna go live in three, two, one, boom. And just like that, we are now live and I can feel less crappy about not posting for two weeks on my main channel. <laughs> now, I always like talking about how much I love these cameras. Like this is the C300 Mark II FX9 Area Lexus, all those cameras are designed to take a beating. It'd obviously be nice to keep it as clean as possible, but sometimes you just get surprised. You show up on set and all of a sudden, there's just a huge sandstorm. And I think part of the reason why these cameras tend to get so expensive is because when they were designed, it was kind of known that these are gonna go through some hell. These cameras, I mean, no matter what you throw at it, within reason, it's probably gonna keep running, which I love. We have an FS700 that I think is about eight years old. That thing, you would not believe what it's been through. And it's still running fine. So I think that's one of the bigger reasons why you pay such a premium for these higher end cinema cameras. Finally getting the studio back together. I've been doing a bad job at remembering SD cards lately. Professional shoots like the one we did earlier, never will I forget something as important as an SD card because we triple, quadruple check these things. But when it comes to just YouTube stuff, sometimes I get a little lazy. So here's one thing I'm gonna start doing on YouTube. I'm gonna leave one memory card here in my card reader and one in the camera. And that way, every time I pull out the memory card from this camera, I just put this one right in. So there's never more than a couple seconds at a time where this camera will not have a memory card. I think that might be a decent strategy, right? Because if there's always a card in the camera, then I'll never forget the card. For any reason, I have to pull the card out of the camera for more than just a couple seconds, then I might just try to make it a rule to always leave the door open for the memory card. That way the door stays open and it's always going to be very obvious that there is no memory card in the camera. So yeah, I'm gonna start doing that now. I have to download this memory card, so I'm going to pull this out and put this one in right away. And we're switched over, camera always has a memory card in it. I think this will be a pretty decent habit to start getting into, huh? All right, so one of the challenges we have to do is try to get a desk up the staircase. The issue 
is that it's very, very narrow through here and it curves right through here. So there's kind of this skinny, awkward little section that we have to get it through. Can we do it? I think anything is possible if we believe. I'm gonna be totally honest, I actually didn't think that was gonna work, but it totally did. Are you impressed? I am. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. I think today's the day that the shed will be complete. No. No? No. She says no. I'm on page 46 right now, and it goes all the way 121. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna finish. Carrie doubts my handedness. I don't doubt you, It's but it is gonna be dark in an hour. I did also use a power drill on the Super 73, and a lot of you guys have said, you're not supposed to use power tools on your bike. Well, didn't you know that. I used it when it got stuck. Yeah, that is true. I yeah. used hand tools for a majority of it, and I really only pulled out the power drill when I got super frustrated and I was trying to get the thing out, but it couldn't come out. So I had to grind it off because I couldn't feel it. It's a long story. But basically they said they're gonna send over the right bolt and that way it should be a whole lot easier. I should just be able to screw that in. Screw, do you call it screw in if it's like with a bolt? Bolted in? Whatever, something like that. All right, shed time. Harry said it couldn't be done, but look at this. We have our doors. We have four walls. We may be missing a roof. <laughs> it's for the skylight. Yeah, totally. Harry likes skylights. The shed saga has gone on far too long. Time to put this to an end. We have a problem. What? We so this is too close to the fence. Yeah, because the roof won't go on without an extra foot that way. We're gonna have to move this entire shed. What do you guys think? Do you think if we just push the shed, it'll all slide out? Or do we need to figure out something different? Wow. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. <laughs> Very last part of the roof. Throw it on, Carrie. <laughs> And now we have a roof over our head. Structurally, we're done. We just have to add on the finishing touches and we're good. Oh, there's some big spider webs. Oh man, I am freaking tired after that. My hands kind of hurt. My hands were hurting after the move and now after doing the shed. I mean, is this like early signs of arthritis or something? Or am I just being a big Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. I didn't mean to use that word as a negative term. Shall we wrap this up by reading a few comments from the last vlog? Imagine if Gene knew networking, had whole home ethernet, and built himself a NAS server. <laughs> I know a lot about cameras, so because of that, I think a lot of people look at me and say, oh, you must know a lot about computers and networking and all that stuff. All that stuff, shoo, dang, all the IT nerds are cringing that you didn't go with ubiquiti for your, I don't even know what that word is, ubiquiti. Can someone explain that to me? Because I am curious. We have gigabit internet here. At the router, we're getting about 960 megabits per second. But by the time it gets to my computer, a few rooms over that way, it goes down to about 400. I was a bike mechanic for a while. When I saw your power drill, I lost all hope. <laughs> Still love it. Yeah, that's something I honestly didn't know. I'm always learning from you guys. But now I know. Why is that though? Is it because that you might over torque it with a power drill though? Is that what it is? Use EBQT access points, they're the best. EBQT, how do you say that? After I cut this camera, that's the first thing I'm gonna go Google and start researching. Am I the only one that watches this channel way more than the Potato Jet channel? It's always interesting to hear whenever some of you guys say that, cause obviously the Potato Jet channel gets way more views. Like more views in the first two hours than this entire vlog channel gets like in the life of a video. But I don't know, there's something I like about having a smaller audience in a way. I know that sounds weird cause you know, usually the goal of a YouTube channel is to have it grow, right? But I feel like the Potato Jet channel, it just kind of started to cross that threshold where people watch it and they don't see me as like a normal person anymore. They see it and they go, oh, Oh, he's this guy on the other side of this screen. And it's kind of weird when you start seeing that shift. Like I still love that channel and the audience there, but there's something a little bit more intimate about this and I feel like I can say whatever and be a normal person. Opposed to Potato Jet where now every time I film something, I'm like, man, a lot of people are gonna see this so I better make sure that it's important and it's really good and it's all set up. Opposed to this vlog channel where I literally hit record and I start building a shed for six hours straight. <laughs> so I appreciate 
appreciate you guys when you guys watch these vlogs. I know they're not as high production value as the main channel, but I really like making them and I'm glad that you guys are watching. So thank you. And yeah, today is Saturday. I think I should be able to get this vlog up in the next hour or two. And yeah, so happy Saturday, happy Sunday. Have a good weekend, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys later.